Fernando, um, can you share some of your best memories from your time in Formula One with us, please? Um, <laughs> yeah, season with Luis, 2007. Um, <laughs> what would it take to bring you back? Uh, right now, it's, it's, it's difficult to think about the coming back, but uh, yeah, the, the door is not closed. I think um, or, or the first reason is because I, I don't know how I will feel next year. You know, I've been doing this for, for my whole life, so maybe next year by April or May, you know, I'm desperate uh, in, in the sofa. So, um, you know, maybe I, I find a way somehow to come back. Lewis, your relationship with Fernando got off to a bit of a rocky, uh, shaky start in 2007. Can you just say how you felt about Fernando then and how your relationships improved um, for the better, obviously, over the years? Uh, I don't really recall it too much, to be honest. I don't feel like I ever, ever had a personal issue with Fernando. It was more team, I would say more how the team was run or the situation that we were put in um, and how that was managed, maybe, probably. Definitely. I think you'll be right. Um, I don't think we ever really had necessarily a, an issue between us, except we were trying to beat each other. and. Um, murder each other's laps on, uh, on on the track. But outside, I mean, we used to play, what was it, NBA mm -hmm. 2K or whatever it was yeah. together every now and then. And um, it was always really quite harmonious outside. So I definitely think naturally we're older, old men now. So we, the respect between us, uh, I'd like to think is higher than it's ever been. And I don't think that's ever going to change. Luis. I want to remind you um, politely of your promise you have given two years ago, same place here in the FIA press conference in Abu Dhabi. Quote, in 10 years, you will have to buy my book and can read the explanation for the change of my and Nico's mechanics crew. Uh, it was a good question. It will be an interested <laughs> read. Do you remember? <laughs> now two I remember. years are over. And I want to know if you already have started writing your book. I am now 69 and have the intention to buy and read it. <laughs> I hope I will still have the chance in my life. <laughs> Is it OK so far? <laughs> that's, a good, yeah. that's a good one. I remember as well. I said 10 years ago, two years ago. Yes. Uh, I've, got, I've got a while now, so you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> you got eight more years to go. <laughs> but look at him. You should say something. You know, <laughs> he deserved it. You know, after the long question. <laughs> <laughs> Lando, what kind of approach are you going to take, considering that McLaren has had a very challenging season? There's, you know, a lot of work to be done for myself and obviously from the team. Uh, they're working very hard for next season. Um, a lot of change in the team to, to try and progress next season and um, get further up the grid from, from where we are now. Uh, but I know it's not going to be easy. Hopefully it's, it's a longer game um, and we can just make improvements. I think that's the biggest thing which I want to be able to do in the team as well is, is improve over time. Um, and eventually, maybe you know, mid-season, end of season, um, two years, whatever, is, is see all this hard work getting paid off. George, you, you worked very close to you with, with Lewis. What's the single most important aspect you'd learn from the world champion sitting next to you? I think from my side, just seeing how <laughs> Lewis deals with the team behind the scenes and everything, I think uh, no matter who you are, you can see how that driver works on track. And at the end of the day, if Lewis gave me any driving advice, what works for him might not work for me or, and vice versa. So I think from my side, the biggest thing I learned is uh, in the debriefs, how he discusses and talks with the engineers and, uh, and deals with that aspect. Well, if we could kick things off, please, with Esteban and Max. Uh, it's been two weeks since you, d you guys were involved in a collision at the Brazilian Grand Prix. And well, Max, let's start with you. Is that now water under the bridge? You guys like the drama, don't you? <laughs> like two weeks after. Uh, yeah, no, all, uh, all good in a in a sense of uh, you know you can't change the results. So um, yeah, it's of course unfortunate. Um, yeah, it's always a bit weird to crash with a with a back marker, but um, that's how it goes. And how do you reflect on it all? Yeah, I mean it's not a, a great thing, you know, to being involved, uh, you know, with a crash with the leader. Of course, um, it's not a thing you want to see and. 
Yeah, I'm sorry for Max. You know, it was his race to win. He did a fantastic job uh, during the whole race. You know, things that happen, you can't, you know, come back from uh, from what has happened. But uh, yeah, that's how it is. We have to move forward. How do you feel about each other as drivers and as men? Boys. 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 Yeah. Well, um, I, I, I don't know. It's like a neutral feeling. <laughs> But I will respond <laughs> if he cannot, I do. Um, no, I mean, we, we've been racing since a long time and, you know, it's been, it's been close, close racing on track. Um, sometimes, you know, there was touches, but, you know, like uh, if you have for fighting for championships or stuff, it's always the case. In a way, it got close at some points, but, uh, yeah, the important is that it stays, uh, you know, good racing um, and good... Uh, Good fun for the fans, but it doesn't go over it, and, and that's important, yeah. Um, if you could go back again, would, would you have the same response? Do you regret your response? Um, no, not really, because I was after an apology, and I got a bit of a different response. And, um, you know, we are all emotional, and, um, you know, just at the time, I lost the victory. Um, so I think for my side, I was really calm. What, what do you expect me to do? Like shake his hand? Like thank you very much for uh, being second instead of first? I think it's quite a normal response. Sebastian and Kimi, um, what are your <laughs> thoughts on go. what happened between these two drivers in Brazil? We can go. <coughs> now? I don't know. I mean, well, I, I have an opinion. I'm not sure I should uh, say what I think. Kimi, do you have any thoughts on it? Not really, I saw it afterwards, but, um, you know, boys are boys, and that's how it goes. So I don't think anything bad happened in the end. What has Ferrari got to do to present a consistent title challenge in 2019? Uh, I think we need a stronger package. We need a certainly had our moments this year that, uh, you know, we had strong races, but we also had races where they weren't very strong. Um, we weren't quick enough, so I think overall it's the speed that decides, and I think uh, more often than not, I think we are lacking a little bit of speed. So uh, yeah, I think we, you know, we're working very hard, and I think the motivation is there to do that final step that is still still outstanding. What do you think you'll enjoy most about driving for Sauber next year? I have a good feeling about it. I'm excited to go there. So plus it's. Uh, it's close to my home, so it's obviously a bonus. Didn't you tell me that you really look forward to the simulator? Yeah, yeah but I have it at home, so I don't no, need that. No, they're simulator. But they don't have it. That's, so that's what yeah, that's yeah, my... But, <laughs> but I told <laughs> that don't spend the money on it, that I have one at home, so we are sorted. So. Okay. <laughs> Sebastian, can you name something that you will miss about Kimi next year? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> Short meetings from my side. Yeah. 